everyone. I hope this finds you doing well. Just wanted to invite you to visit the website, Mindset Matters Podcast One, that's the number one, um, dot com. And there you'll find a blog that has pictures that go with each episode that are kind of interesting to see. And there are multiple ways to interact, um, leave your contact information, or you can leave a voicemail that you would like played on a future episode. So, um, if you have time, um, that would be great if you could visit that website. I wanted to just put a little, um, not a, not a warning, but just a heads up. This um, episode is focusing on foster parents and we're looking at it in a very positive light. Um, however, I do realize that some people have had bad experiences. So, um, and we'll also be touching on a little bit um, why and how children end up needing foster care, um, which can also be a little bit triggering. So if, um, if the topic itself um, is, um, not a positive one for you, then I would invite you to just maybe not listen and come back to our next episode. But the, um, the focus today really is on the majority of foster care homes, foster care parents who are doing just an absolutely heroic job, um, giving children a soft place to land at very difficult times in their life. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. Welcome to Mindset Matters, the courage to continue, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the lives of a profession. This is episode 31, The Courage to Open Up Your Heart and Home, The Hero Hearts of Foster Parents. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Nearly 700,000 children are substantiated or confirmed as victims of maltreatment in the U.S. every year. A significant portion of these children require assistance for their physical or mental health, and a considerable number will also require a substitute caregiver on a temporary or permanent basis to safeguard them from potential harm. Foster care ensures continuous care around the clock by placing children either with relatives called kinship care or non-relatives called family foster homes. In cases where children require intensive levels of care or supervision, they may be placed in a residential group or congregate care setting. Each U.S. state operates its own child welfare system, and they are responsible for investigating reports of child maltreatment, deciding on the removal of children from their homes, and organizing substitute care along with physical and mental health services to address the impacts of maltreatment. The Code of Federal Regulations provides the following definition of foster care. Foster care means 24-hour substitute care for children placed away from their parents or guardians and for whom the state agency has placement and care responsibility. This includes, but is not limited to, placements in foster family homes, foster homes of relatives, group homes, emergency shelters, residential facilities, child care institutions, and pre-adoptive homes. States have the legal authority to remove children from homes when they are in imminent danger of harm under their parents' patrie authority, which allows states to act on behalf of children who cannot act on their own behalf. Children typically enter the foster care system through two primary pathways. The predominant method involves confidential reports of suspected maltreatment submitted to the state or county hotline. These reports may come from mandated reporters in the community, such as physicians, police officers, teachers, or counselors, or they may come in from a concerned citizen. 
Subsequently, a caseworker from Child Protective Services conducts an investigation to assess the validity of the allegations and determine if the child or family necessitates protective services to prevent potential harm in the future. Should the caseworker conclude that the child's health or safety is under imminent threat, they will pursue an emergency protection order from the court, typically presided over by a family court judge. If the court grants approval for the removal, the child transitions into a temporary ward of the state or county, with the responsibility falling on the respective entity to arrange placement in a suitable form of foster care home. The other, less frequent method by which children may enter the foster care system is through voluntary relinquishment, where parents choose to surrender their children due to their inability to provide care. In all states, parents have the option to relinquish newborns to emergency personnel at designated locations, such as fire stations or hospitals, under state safe haven laws established to prevent infant abandonment. Parents may also surrender children for whom they find it difficult to provide care for, such as children with severe physical disabilities or severe behavioral problems. While in foster care, children are granted a permanency plan with the objective of placing them in a permanent family. This may involve reunification with their birth parents or adoption or guardianship or permanent custody with a relative. The majority of children are initially assigned a permanency goal focused on reunification with their birth parents. However, statistically, only about half of these children will ultimately be reunited with their birth parents. This outcome is often attributed to the parents' inability to fulfill court-mandated requirements for the return of their children, which may include completing parenting classes, undergoing substance use treatment, or securing safe housing. When reunification is not feasible, adoption or guardianship are deemed suitable alternatives. The duration of time children spend in foster care varies significantly. The majority of children who experience reunification spend less than one year in foster care, while those awaiting adoption or adoptive placement typically have a longer tenure in foster care placements. During their time in foster care, federal law mandates that whenever feasible, children should be situated in the least restrictive environment close to their parents' residence and their original school. The law additionally emphasizes the priority of kinship care and placement with siblings together. Collectively, these preferences aim to assist children in preserving their current family, school, and community ties, fostering a sense of normalcy as much as can be possible. This approach is designed to ensure that children in foster care can partake in experiences and opportunities akin to those of their peers who are not in foster care. The requirements to become a foster care parent in the United States can vary by state and agency, but there are some common criteria. It's important to note that these are general guidelines and specific details may differ based on your location. But here are some common requirements. Foster parents are typically required to be at least 21 years old. Applicants should be in good physical and mental health. A health assessment may be required. A thorough background check, including criminal and child abuse clearances, is usually mandatory. Foster parents are generally required to demonstrate a stable financial situation to meet the needs of the family. Completion of pre-service training or parenting classes may be required. This helps prepare foster parents for the challenges of caring for children in the system. Agencies conduct home studies to ensure that the living environment is safe and suitable for children. Providing personal and professional references is a common requirement as well. Foster parents may need to be licensed or certified. This process involves meeting specific state requirements and standards. Some agencies may require foster parents to be culturally competent and open to supporting children from diverse backgrounds. Having a support system, including family and friends, is often considered beneficial. 
Foster parents in the United States receive financial support to help cover the costs associated with caring for a child placed in their home. The amount can vary based on factors such as the child's age, special needs, and the state in which the foster parents reside. The financial support is intended to cover the child's basic needs, including food, clothing, and shelter. Being a foster parent requires patience, understanding, and realistic expectations. Foster children in the U.S. may face a range of challenges due to the unique circumstances surrounding their placement in foster care. It's important to note that each child's experience is individual and not all foster children will encounter the same issues. But some common challenges may include trauma. Many foster children have experienced trauma, often stemming from abuse, neglect, or family disruptions. The effects of trauma can impact their emotional and mental well-being. Another issue can be separation and loss. Foster children often experience the separation from their biological families, which can lead to feelings of loss, grief, and identity issues. Instability. Multiple placements and changes in caregivers can result in a lack of stability for foster children. This instability can impact their sense of security and hinder the development of trusting relationships. Educational challenges. Frequent moves may disrupt a foster child's education, leading to academic challenges. They may struggle to adjust to new schools, and there can be gaps in their educational history. Behavioral issues. Behavioral problems can arise as a result of the trauma and instability foster children have experienced. They may exhibit challenging behaviors as a way of coping with their emotions. Emotional and mental health. Foster children may struggle with emotional and mental health issues, including anxiety, depression, or attachment disorders, as a consequence of their early life experiences. Health care needs. Foster children may have unmet health care needs, including physical, dental, or mental health services. Ensuring access to comprehensive health care can be a challenge. Identity and self-esteem. Foster children may grapple with questions of identity and self-esteem, particularly if they have been moved between different homes and communities. Efforts are made by child welfare agencies and foster parents to address these challenges and provide support to foster children. Early intervention, stable placements, access to mental health services, and educational support are critical components in helping children overcome these obstacles and helping them to thrive. Becoming a foster parent can be a rewarding and fulfilling experience, despite the challenges involved. Here are some of the rewards of being a foster parent. Making a positive impact. Fostering provides an opportunity to make a positive impact on a child's life. By offering a safe and supportive environment, you can contribute to a child's well-being and development. Providing stability. Foster parents have the chance to offer stability to children who may have experienced instability and trauma. A stable and caring home environment can be transformative for a child's sense of security. Building relationships. Fostering children allows you to build meaningful relationships with children and potentially with their biological families. Being a supportive and caring figure in a child's life can create lasting lifetime bonds. Helping children grow. Foster parents play a crucial role in helping children reach their full potential. By offering guidance, encouragement, and support, you can contribute to the child's personal and educational growth. Learning and growing as a family. Fostering can be a learning experience for the entire family. It provides opportunities for personal and interpersonal growth, as well as the development of empathy and understanding. Being a role model. Foster parents serve as positive role models for children in their care. By modeling healthy relationships, communication skills, and coping mechanisms, you can influence a child's future behavior and choices. Advocating for children. 
Foster parents often become advocates for the children in their care. This may involve working with schools, health care providers, and the legal system to ensure the best interests of the child are met. Celebrating Achievements Witnessing a child's achievements, whether big or small, can be incredibly rewarding. Celebrating milestones, academic successes, and personal growth moments are part of the joy of fostering. Contributing to Community Fostering is a way to contribute to the well-being of the community you live in. By providing a stable home for children in need, foster parents contribute to the overall health and resilience of their communities. While fostering presents its challenges, the rewards often stem from the positive impact you can have on a child's life and the sense of fulfillment derived from helping them navigate the difficult circumstances they are experiencing. Here is one foster parent story. In a quiet suburban neighborhood, Sarah Thompson, a dedicated woman in her early 40s, lives and works and opens her heart and home. Sarah's journey into foster parenting began when she and her husband James decided to open their hearts and their home to children in need. Their motivation was rooted in a deep desire to provide a stable and loving environment for those who had experienced the hardships of abuse or neglect. Their first placement was Emily, a shy eight-year-old with a penchant for art. Emily's early life had been marred by instability, and she arrived at Sarah and James's doorstep with a mix of apprehension and hope. Sarah's commitment to creating a nurturing environment became immediately apparent as she patiently helped Emily adjust to her new surroundings. Over the months that followed, Sarah and James worked tirelessly to ensure Emily's well-being. They collaborated with teachers, attended therapy sessions, and became strong advocates for Emily within the child welfare system. Sarah's gentle and understanding approach helped Emily find her voice and express her emotions through art. As the Thompsons continued to open their home to more foster children, they faced challenges that tested their resolve. Each child brought a unique set of needs and experiences, but Sarah's unwavering dedication remained constant. She not only provided a safe haven, but also encouraged the children to dream, explore their talents, and envision a brighter future. One of the most poignant moments in Sarah's journey came when Emily, now a teenager, exhibited her artwork at a local gallery. The room buzzed with admiration for Emily's talent, and Sarah stood proudly by her side. It was a celebration, not only of artistic achievement, but also of the resilience fostered within a caring home. Sarah's story is not without its heartaches and complexities. There were tearful goodbyes as children moved on to reunite with their families or find permanent homes. Yet through it all, Sarah remained a steadfast pillar of support, offering love and guidance to every child who entered her life, many of whom she has had long-lasting communication with. In the community, Sarah's impact resonated beyond her own home. She became an advocate for foster parenting, sharing her experiences and encouraging others to consider opening their homes to children in need. Her story serves as an inspiration, illustrating the profound difference one foster parent can make in the lives of vulnerable children. Sarah's journey continues filled with hope and a commitment to making a positive impact on the lives of those who need it most. Her story is a reminder that with love, patience, and dedication, foster parents can truly change the trajectory of a child's life. If you would like to look into becoming a foster parent in your state, um, what you need to do is visit your state's particular DHS foster parent page that will give you the requirements. Um, But in general, you need to be over 21, um, be a stable person, and um, They will want you to take some classes. And if you're wondering if you need to be married, you do not. There are many single, uh, wonderful foster parents. Um, 
If you would like to read some books about it, one book is called Raising Other People's Children, What Foster Parenting Taught Me About Bringing Together a Blended Family. Um, and this was written by Debbie Osborne and Natalie Ford in 2021. So, and this will give you a peek into what it's like to um, have uh, foster children if you have um, bio children in your home and what that's like to, to blend the two together. Another book that you can read is called Maybe Days, a book for children in foster care. This was written in 2001 by Jennifer Wolgocki, um, and it's a wonderful book that gives you insight into um, all of the cares and wonders that these children would come into your home with, um, because there's so much uncertainty for them. So it gives you a good glimpse into what it's like for the kids. Um so our quote of the day comes from Fred Rogers. If you're my age, you remember him on television. Um, if you're younger, you might have seen the recent movie about his life. But this quote comes from Fred Rogers. It says, anyone who does anything to help a child in his life is a hero. Please enjoy the following audio clip of some foster parents um, sharing their experiences um, with foster care. It's important to feel that somebody cares about you. Um, just to have the stability of being able to stay somewhere and feeling like you belong. Uh, not feeling different because you, you are in foster care. Seeing the experiences of life through these children has really helped me to realize that even in my own life, God has given me so much. And he has blessed me with so much. And I want to be able to share those same experiences with these children and to be able to be a blessing to them. A lot of these kids feel they don't belong because they have passed through home after home after home. And they feel like, wow, nobody gives them a chance. Nobody wants them because maybe of their age or maybe what they've been through. If you have a heart, you can turn that around as a foster parent. You can. And they will learn to love you. They will learn to trust you. But it's what they've been through that you have to work on. The impact foster parents can have on the kid's life is tremendous. I know from working with some teenagers that I've talked to who are now adults, they'll say that time period that they were with those foster families, they got, they had so many new experiences. They went to school every day and, and really gained a lot of knowledge that way that they may not have gotten and um, really had some great role models for whatever length of time they were in that home. They'll never forget the experience. When, you know, you're loving and you have empathy and you have care um, and you show that to a child, it's a distinction between mom, you know, and mother in this house or, the, or dad and father, right? Um, I have a mother, you know, I, I came from her uterus, right? But she's not my mom. Um, you know, my mom is this woman right here. And I, you know, she, she, you know, gave that to me by showing up and doing the work. Um, and in turn, I said, yes, yeah, I accept you as my mom. You're right. These children should not know they're in foster care. They are in need of a good home, safe home, disciplined structure until parents get themselves together, if that is possible. If not, they might need a place to stay. And that's what I'm here for. That is my passion. Foster care has been an awesome choice for our family. It's not always been easy, but it's always rewarding. You get to see them grow and you get to see them change and you get to see them heal and work through hard things that are in their lives that they need to work through and they need to overcome. And it's just really awesome to see that. Thank you for taking your time to listen to Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. 
please send us your hero heart story to Mindset Matters Podcast One at gmail.com. Our next episode will be about Eunice Kennedy Shriver. We hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email mindsetmatterspodcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindset matters podcast, the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.